Good morning. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to how to recruit, hire, retain people with developmental disabilities. Um, we are uh, happy to have you with us today. We have over 60 participants online and welcome each and every one of you. Uh, this is part of the Working Together campaign, which is uh, dedicated to uh, promoting employment uh, for people with developmental disabilities. And um, campaign is sponsored by the Louisiana Development Dis Developmental Disabilities Council. Uh, we are hosted today by Jefferson uh, Chamber and appreciate Todd and his people working hard to promote it. And we are in partnership with Greater New Orleans Inc., uh, NOLA Sherm, and Louisiana Rehabilitation Services. So welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Gordon O'Neill. I'm the Working Together Campaign Coordinator. Um, and I work in a marketing and communications firm that is a uh, large part of its work is in the disability community. And we do work for the councils. There's developmental disability councils in just about every state. And so we are very, very active in the councils in Georgia, North Carolina, Ohio, Kansas, and now Louisiana. So it's just an area of specialty for us uh, that we uh, particularly enjoy. Um, we not only talk the talk about employment, we walk the walk. Um, we hire um, interns coming out of college prep programs with developmental disabilities and have uh, had a great deal of success with it. Uh, Mr. Arsenault, would you like to introduce yourself? Good morning, everybody. I appreciate y'all getting on this morning. My name is Jeff Arsenault. I was born with CP. Uh, I, I lived in South Carolina for a good 20 years, the middle part of my life, and I was quite successful in management and retail and distribution. Uh, I say that because when people hear it, it's like a wow moment. And it should not be a wow moment. So I made the decision to relocate. And at 42 years old, I found myself having to start over. And that's when the rubber met the road for me. I, uh, I struggled finding that success that I once had in South Carolina. And to be honest with you, I'm still struggling. I do work full time. I do a lot of public speaking. I do what I have to do to make it in the world we live in. Uh, and my mission is to use my experience in management in the professional world to move the needle when it comes to employment in the DD community forward. We don't have to make it perfect. And I think that's one of the things we don't focus on. We just need to see that needle move. So I'm looking forward to today. Thank you. Uh Jeff is the, was a recipient of the 2019 Ken Vince Memorial Award presented by the governor for outstanding leadership in the disability community. Uh, he also has uh, the FBI and one of the largest um, healthcare providers in the state as clients. So he's um, sometimes rather modest. Uh, happy to introduce Mr. Todd Murphy. Todd, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you, Gordon. Uh, thrilled to be here. Uh, I'm president of the Jefferson Chamber, and uh, we work to improve the business climate and the quality of life throughout our parish and region. And I'm very excited to be part of Jefferson Parish. It's, it's really, you know, while this pandemic has been quite a struggle, uh, our parish is doing very well. Um, our retail is uh, doing exceptionally well. Um, our sales tax revenue is up. Our um, uh, real estate permits are up for new construction. Our 
houses are going faster than you can shake a stick and, and commercial uh, growth is going well as, as, as can be. I think um, this area of employment is probably the area that we, we struggle the most with. Uh, never ever in my lifetime did I ever think we would be competing with the federal government for workforce. And quite frankly, that's what's happened uh, over the past several months, almost a year now. Um, we've incentivized people to stay home. And so what I hear every day from employers is that they need workers. They need people to come to work uh, in all capacities. And so this is just a great opportunity. And, and as Jeff said, it's an opportunity to move the needle, uh, to, to help businesses get employer employees uh, at, to work so that businesses can stay open. Um, how many restaurants do you go to that uh, have shortened hours? Maybe they were normally open on Sundays and now they're not. Maybe they were normally open for breakfast. Now they don't open till dinner. Um, we've got to get uh, retail establishments, restaurants, service industry. I talk to people that, that work in the accounting business and the, and the legal profession. Everybody needs help right now. So this is a great opportunity. Um, I think that, um, that this is something that uh, maybe not everybody thinks about every day, but certainly a way that, that we can, yes, move that needle and get people to work. So thank you all for being here. Uh, I know we've got over 60 participants, and I hope you, you gain a couple of reasons uh, why we should be working together to employ people with developmental disabilities. Thanks, and we're happy to be a part of this. Great. Thanks, Thank Todd. You, Todd. All right, Charlene, am I having you or Clement uh, join me? All right, I'm here. Oh, uh, well, yes. this, is, this is Clement. Uh, my name's Clement Dugay, and I'm a... Uh, brand new employer, uh, employee rather with the state, uh, Louisiana Rehab Services. Though I have a lot of experience working with uh, LRS, I did work with them uh, through Goodwill Industries a good while ago. Uh, when, I don't know if you know, uh, Gordon, Jim Collins, who used to be the president of uh, Southeast uh, Goodwill. Uh, and that was a while back. I've also worked in private industry. Uh, with, with in private rehab, and I'm also a certified uh, professional consultant. So uh, as I've done a whole lot of placement in my time and a whole lot of placement with individuals with uh, 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 problems or disabilities. And so, but uh, as uh, Todd was mentioning, I think this is a time of opportunity and especially uh, in Jefferson Parish. Uh, I've also worked in the parish. I worked with workforce uh, with the parish. So I, I, I do think this is a great time for opportunities, a great time for people to even look at changing careers. I know about uh, five years or 10 years ago, uh, folks were really reticent about uh, making some sort of change in their life or what they did. So uh, this, although uh, we, we have a lot of inconsistencies with the new variant that we have going around, I think there's still a lot of opportunity and uh, I think we should all hope for the best. I think we can look forward to good things happening. Very good. Charlene, did you have anything to add? Oh, uh, she's not uh, here. Yeah, something really right now, um, just that I am Charlene Bunk, the regional manager for the New Orleans area for Louisiana Rehab Services and that does include the eight parish metropolitan area. So. That includes Jefferson, Orleans, Plaquemines, and St. Bernard as well. Very good. So y'all have met the two people from Louisiana Rehabilitation Services that can really help you get all of this done. So good to have both of you with us this morning. Uh, I just want to talk very briefly about the curriculum. Um, I'm sure. sorry, Gordon. I don't know if you just forgot about me, but um... oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Jermaine. I I I, I think with uh, uh, Charlene and all that going on, I got a little confused. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me introduce. This is a good place to introduce yeah, you right. anyway. Uh, Jermaine <laughs> Townsend, would you like to introduce yourself? I'd be happy to. Um, I am Jermaine Townsend. I work for HR NOLA. We are a consulting firm here in the New Orleans area. I also serve on the board uh, of the New Orleans chapter of the Society for Human Resource Management as their Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Director. Um, 
I'm so passionate about promoting DE&I and also the A, which is accessibility. And we've seen that diversity, equity, inclusion is evolving over the years and including everybody, making a place of belonging has become the forefront. Even with our current administration, the, the uh, accessibility for people who are uh, in disadvantaged positions has really been a, a focal point. So I'm excited to be a part of this conversation today. I launched our organization's first diversity and inclusion book club. And the intent uh, is to proactively engage the HR professionals in a dialogue that prepares them to facilitate the conversations around the sensitive topics of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So I'm excited to be a part of the um, webinar today and I'm hoping to you know, bring some valuable content to the table. That's great. great. Thank you so much. Uh, and so uh, she's talking about SHRM, although it's the Society for Human Resource Management. And a great deal of the curriculum that you're, you're seeing today uh, is some of their work. Uh, I've got Talent Acquisition, Guide to Understanding and Managing the Recruitment Process, but also employing people with cognitive disabilities and a lot of the work that they've done in this very uh, important area. You also, uh, we've relied heavily on uh, Louisiana Rehabilitation Services and ODEP, which is the Office of uh, Disability Employment Policy in uh, Washington, DC, which they've done that, uh, some very good work. A lot of the curriculum is based on their um, programs as well. Uh, you're welcome to comment throughout, ask questions, uh, submit questions via chat or raise your hand. Devika Rao will be uh, bringing those questions to my attention or the uh, panelists' attention. Um, at the end, you will get a survey and be asked for comments. It's uh, the first webinar we've done here in New Orleans. And so your input is very, very important to us. And we would um, uh, really appreciate you filling out those uh, surveys. What you should already have received this morning, you got a reminder email and attached to that is a 28 page PDF booklet. Uh, and also the Louisiana uh, Development Disabilities Council informational brochure. Uh, when we are done, uh, this webinar's recording and the PowerPoint will be available online at laddc-workingtogether.com, curriculum-resources. So uh, feel free to use those as you see fit and uh, look at them as we go forward. Uh, just talk about our goals this morning. We want to really provide y'all with step-by-step -step strategies to successfully recruit, hire, and retain people with intellectual and developmental disabilities in a competitive and inclusive environment. That means working together side by side. And um, that's very, very key element of our approach. Uh, as you've watched employment in the disability community evolve, uh, it, at one point was a lot of sheltered workshops and everybody that worked in those workshops all had disabilities. Um, and thus there was not in an inclusive environment and that really held back those people from progressing as well as they could have. So we also want to provide you the employer access to really a unique pool of potential employees with diverse skills who are eager, reliable and committed to succeeding in the competitive and integrated workforce. Um, it was kind of funny as Todd was talking, we have people with law degrees, CPAs that have developmental disabilities and all sorts of, uh, in all sorts of professions. And so some great code writers have autism and those types of things. So it's really a diverse group of people that you'll be able to look at. And then we want you to decide what's the best strategy for you to move forward. Are you going to do it yourself? Or are you going to go it alone and uh, start your own rec uh, recruiting process? Are you going to rely on the services of Louisiana Rehabilitation Services, which you'll hear a lot about here in a few minutes? Uh, or uh, do you want to rely on a private, uh, private or nonprofit consultant or agency uh, such as Germain's or even called Jeff. Um, those are all there 
and available for you, you to use to help you implement a uh, inclusive workforce strategy. So why would you as the employer like to participate? Um, first of all, a lot of this, what I'm relying on right now is based on SHRM's research. SHRM is always sending out surveys to its employee um, members and, and those types of things and builds data data-based uh, assumptions or uh, conclusions. And one of their findings, employers love the enthusiasm that people with developmental disabilities bring to the job. That's just all there is to it. Uh, they bring reliability to the job and they improve team productivity. You're going to say, now, how does that happen? How does a person with uh, a severe disability improve productivity? But what you'll find is they get to work on time. When they take their break, they go to break and they come back from their break on time. And all of a sudden they start setting a new tone, a new culture begins to emerge around these people. They bring that enthusiasm instead of sitting in the corner and complaining about what's wrong, they are over there happy to be there. And so that's really uh, a big part of it. They tend to stay in their jobs longer. Uh, not as much turnover, not as much job hopping. Again, proven in some of Sherm's research. And that ultimately saves you money. Um, they strive for continuous improvement and inspiration. They're just an inspiration to those around them as they, uh, you know, sometimes you do have to tell them multiple times how you want something done but they continue to strive to understand and do it better each and every time. So they're happy to be there. Um, so creativity, innovation, and energy. And I'll just share you with y'all one of my, or one of our firms, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> interns, thank you. Um, one of our interns, uh, we hired him and um, he was to be producing videos. And so his, first video production really just did not meet our standards. And we wouldn't be comfortable giving that to a client as a finished product of the firm. And so we sat him down and we said, look, you know, you're supposed to have exciting interviews about disability issues. And that was kind of pretty blase. And so, um, you know, he, he had a job coach and he and his job coach took talked it over and all of a sudden he loves milkshakes loves milkshakes and so he came up with this idea to bring two milkshakes one for the person he's interviewing and his own and he started this theme of shaking it up with Deontay and so the milkshakes were the key thing and he, they just talk and they and it just brought new energy to his projects new innovation new new approach and so uh Please understand these people are very, very talented and um, just interesting to work with. Hey, Gordon, uh, can yes. I do that? You uh, certainly. All right. Uh, first off, uh, a lot of my data I've experienced. And when I came into this world and started hearing about Sherm, I started seeing the data data reflect what I went through. I did not know about the Sherm data. I knew what I did went through. So when you talk about enthusiasm, hopefully you see it right now. This is the deal. Where will you go where somebody's excited about going to work and giving eight hours of solid work. And you ask, how is hiring somebody with a disability going to affect productivity in the bottom line? When people work around me, I give 150% because I have to, to do 80% of the job. When people that are given 60 watch a guy with cerebral palsy giving 150% all day long, guess what? 
that morale goes up, the productivity goes up, we're making more money. And that sounds drastic, but that's reality. Happy to be there. Once again, a lot of people with disabilities don't have a lot going on at home. Sad to say, but reality. So going to work eight hours a day, it, that's what we got. That's, what, that's how we contribute to society that we live in. Thank you, Gordon. That's great, Jeff. Listen, I, I'd like to jump in a little bit and um, sure. just talk about where Jeff was talking. Um, I don't know if you guys realize this, but uh, COVID layoffs, it really, really hit people with disabilities hard. I mean, before yeah. COVID, that probably about one in five of people with disabilities had a job. So this is like an untapped talent resource for employers who are, spread. you know, there's they're struggling to get those jobs filled. I've, uh, I speak with many clients who say, you know, I just don't even have people applying for the jobs. I was talking to somebody yesterday who was talking about, you know, the, the candidates just aren't there right now. They're having to look at, you know, their business model and change things up because they, they just don't see the, the resources there. But people with disabilities is going to be an untapped talent resource for employers, especially in the climate that we're in right now. And because they were disproportionately affected by the COVID layoffs, there's, there's a lot of people out there that are, that are looking for jobs, but wanting to make a positive impact, just like Jeff. Yeah, thank you, Jeremy. Well said, thank you. Well and as you can tell that enthusiasm that Jeff brings to the table, that's just an example. He's been doing that through this entire campaign. So he, he's just been a great asset. Uh, so we just want to talk very briefly today about a four-step process. Um, and it's basically planning your recruitment, creating the culture, then the actual recruitment and hiring of people, and then the accommodation and retention of those employees once they're on staff. Um, as you listen to us, you've got to focus on people's abilities, not disabilities, and you've got to remain flexible and creative. It's really a pretty simple approach. So, um, and by the way, I think ODEPS was a 13-step process, so I'm trying to speed things along for everybody. Um, first of all, you might start with your own HR SWAT. You know, sit down and think about your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, all those things within the workforce, from a workforce perspective. You start identifying specific job titles or functions or needs that may offer opportunity for somebody with a disability. Um, and as you start getting that match up, you need to involve senior management and you need to say, you know, uh, a lot of um, uh, interest in these webinars have been from people in the hospitality industry, housekeeping, things like that. So you have to involve senior management. Got this problem in housekeeping. We can't get enough housekeepers in here. Um, you know, so here's an option. And so because you've done your research on what your needs are, you can start getting senior management to support a different approach. Um, and so as you go forward, you may need to make some further adaption to the application process, interview process, and improve onboarding and those types of things. But getting that senior management uh, support is very, very critical. Uh, and then reevaluate your HR's openness to unsolicited, unsolicited uh, applications from people with developmental disabilities. Uh, if somebody walks in the door uh, with cerebral palsy that requires crutches, you know, how, do, how does the staff react? And so you've got to make sure that they uh, have that welcoming approach to anybody walking through the door or that resume that comes across your desk. Uh, and make sure your recruiting messages are encouraging people with disabilities uh, to apply for those positions. Uh, planning new strategies. So job development is kind of, uh, kind of along those same lines. It's identifying those specific job skills for vacant positions, 
and then looking at potential qualified candidates that might match up. Uh, and then you might need to renegotiate the job description. And that is kind of close to job customization where you have a person that the last function is to push a 40 pound box down the line or something. And because of cerebral palsy or some other disability, they might not have that strength. How can you adjust the job to the right or job to the left of that person to make that all fit in nicely to your production efforts. Uh, job coaching, uh, Louisiana Rehabilitation Services, Goodwill Industries, and all these organizations, and we'll talk about some of them specifically here, uh, offer you all kinds of consulting and support services that help you successfully deal with um, your employees with disabilities. Um, and that goes back to Deontay, the story on Deontay. He had a job coach and we talked it over with the job coach and the job coach said, let's sit down and talk to him about it. And so uh, we reacted quickly. We didn't let it you know, grow into a bigger problem and it worked out wonderfully. Uh, you have to be willing to uh, embrace assistive technologies. By the way, that's what glasses are. That's an assistive technology. You see, we have um, American Sign Language being provided in closed captioning. These are assistive technologies and accommodations that don't cost a lot of money, but are very, very important. Uh, one of our clients over in North Carolina actually often has an ASL interpreter in a meeting with one of the people we talk to deal with on a regular basis. So those are all just things that you need to be, and, and going back to that uh, accommodations, are you willing to accept a service animal in your you know, environment? These times? So that's that planning, are you, okay, let's think this through, let's think what might happen if, and, and be prepared for it and know how you're going to uh, be able to respond uh, positively. <laughs> Uh, Charlene, uh, you want to talk to him a little bit about Louisiana Rehabilitation Services? I do. Um, so basically, we do have the on-the-job training program, OJ, or OJT for short. Essentially, what we do with that is we are looking for employers to hire someone on permanently. Um, and we will reimburse the employers up to three months time and a half the salary plus 9.33%, which is for FICA, Social Security, et cetera. Um, it, we can also provide the person needs job coaching while we doing this OJT, we can help with that. We do also have a rehabilitation engineer that we can send out. If you need any type of information on possible accommodations, equipment, et cetera. Um, and there are, of course, tax incentives for employers, uh, work opportunity tax credit, et cetera. But the, it is really a good deal with the OJT because, again, we do pay one and a half times this, whatever the employer's salary is, plus the 9.33%. Um, for our young people, uh, transition age students still in high school or recently exited, we also do the work-based learning experiences. And those are short-term employment experiences. Um, we can reimburse an employer for up to 240 hours of work at whatever the rate of pay that that employer pays. Um, there's not really complicated billing. Essentially, we just get a W-9. There's a direct deposit form for the work-based learning experiences, which is for the youth. Basically, there's just the one-page form that you have to send in. It's just check boxes along with check stubs. For the on-the-job training, at the beginning, the employer just puts something forward saying, you know, we're gonna train this person to do X, Y, Z. This is our schedule. Week one, they'll do this. Week two, that doesn't have to be complicated. I have samples if anybody would need that. And then the same thing with the OJT, you would go ahead and send in a monthly progress report saying, oh, we're doing great. We learned this, we struggle with this so on, and then we would need check stubs to reimburse. So both of those are really great uh, programs, uh, really no expense to the employer. 
Um, we can provide for uniforms, other services that they might need. So it's really a win-win for everybody. Very good. One of her uh, colleagues is a gentleman named Chuck. I can't remember his last name off the top, but he was talking about one of his uh, employers in his community had over $100,000 in reimbursements over the last 12 months. So he took huge, or they had taken a great deal advantage of the OJP program and really made a significant difference to the bottom line of that company. Uh, culture, uh, the culture, um, the culture's got to include senior management support. Uh, it's critical to creating a welcoming environment, an employment process, an inclusive work environment. Um, what's it, it require? Um, including people with disabilities in your diversity recruitment goals and recruiting strategies. That's step number one. And we're talking about those right now. That's what we're talking about. So from what we're talking about, you can integrate a lot of these strategies into that exact same thing. Adopting policies, providing workforce flexibility and accommodations for applications and employees. And that goes back to a service animal. This uh, employee or potential employee requires a service animal. What are the policies within your HR um, organization for accommodating that? Um, a visual public commitment to recruit, hire, and retain and advance individuals with uh, disabilities. So the you know senior management can come kind of be over there but you really want them to visually and actively be say we're out to achieve this. And we're out to achieve this because my HR person brought me a SWOT analysis that proves this is in the best interest of my company and it's in the best interest of our society. So um, that getting that visual and personal public commitment is pretty critical to how it uh, is received down the line. Uh, really uh, presumability uh, presuming the ability as opposed to looking at the disability, normalizing supports, and that can be anywhere. There's special telephones for people with uh, hearing disabilities, <clears throat> screen enlargement for people with visual impairments and those types of things. Uh, and um, those are all parts of making sure we're all aware we're going to, uh, those become commonplace instead of the exception. Um, uh, coalition building, start on senior uh, management level, then the supervisory level, and you can really go down, sit down, and you talk to the supervisor and you say, you know, you, you're three short in uh, the number of employees we have in uh, housekeeping today, if I can overcome that, and we need to make these accommodations of that work for you, you're generally going to get a lot of positives, yes, 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 yes. So, um, and then on down to the workforce, make sure they're introduced, they're introduced with respect and, and you set that tone uh, immediately as to how we're going to um, deal with people with disabilities that they are, are peers and, and part of the team. Uh, disability employment initiatives, uh, kind of start with that SWAT, share the numbers, specific job difficulties, Look at turnover rates, absenteeism, tardiness. Those are the things that all of a sudden start making employees with disabilities more and more attractive to you. Uh, and then profile the local workforce is, are the people that you need to be successful of available. And from what Todd was saying, right now that's a big difficulty. And so uh, as you're doing that, if you start looking at the uh, profiling those in the developmental disability um, area and the training programs and resources available, it becomes a very, very attractive uh, deal for just about anybody uh, that's in business. Corning, can I chime in? <laughs> of course. You know, we talk about the CEO making this initiative in how great it is. But when you talk about training, when the CEO says, hey guys, I wanna implement this in our operation, we need to make sure that trickles 
all the way down to the 18 year old kid who's going to train the individual with a disability. Where is the sensitivity training in this process? So upper management, it's great. All the signs on the break room, that's all great. But if it doesn't get down to the training, that's where the rubber meets the road. And that's where a lot of the problem is. Because in order to train somebody with a disability, hey, guess what? My trainer needs to be aware that Jeff has cerebral palsy and Jeff might have some specificity instead of them acting like a dog and a deer in headlights the first eight hours of wondering how do I, what, uh, you know, that's a wasted aha moment. So there's nothing wrong with giving somebody a heads up, hey, this joker is the bomb, but he's got cerebral palsy. And I talk a lot about an individual with a DD having a go-to person, like a mentor. Hey, Gordon, I know you told me this morning, but where's the town clock? We get so bogged down in learning the task that it's the simple, no-brainer stuff that we forget, and that's how we lose jobs. Because we don't, we don't feel comfortable about St. Gordon. I know you told me this five times, but one more time. Where's the bathroom? It sounds silly, but this is reality. So sensitivity is key. Thank you. Yeah. Uh... In earlier conversations, Jeff has said, you know, we, we don't need sympathy. We just need a little empathy here and there. And, uh, and that's certainly reflective in, some, in many of his comments. So the recruiting and the hiring of people with developmental disabilities, um, you know, I've kind of said it requires creativity, flexibility, and, in, and a commitment to ensuring individuals with disabilities can participate and this goes back to what you're mentioning, you? an accessible hiring process. And it begins with the message. So first, write your ads or posters or any other communications in people first language. And if you look at the uh, curriculum I sent you, I think the last page is the examples of people first language. But you can Google it. And there are there's a great deal written about people first language. So uh, you're really probably gonna to wanna to find a simple solution to understanding people first language. But just it's just writing the language so that, um, again, you're focusing on abilities, not disabilities, and that's a mental process in how you do things. Assure the application and interview process are accessible and appropriate and uh, reasonable accommodations are available. And so what does that mean? Well, you wanna make sure your walkways, your hallways are all clean and accessible. Uh, the reception area is welcoming. Um, and then what kind of accommodations might, well, you might have to allow a little longer interview process. Uh, Deontay, um, when we interviewed him, he. His, his mind was trying to get his voice box to connect, but sometimes it would be a, it, he didn't stutter, he just couldn't get it started. And so it could be 20 seconds. And, it, you know, you've got to be ready for that. And you got to say, okay, how am I going to, so that's making those accommodations and um, making sure that they feel comfortable in those accommodations. I'd like to add something to that, uh, Gordon. I think, sure. um, a lot of times as HR professionals, um, we forget about 
the accommodation of the job application, we wanna make sure that there's language that says, hey, if you need an accommodation, here's how you can get that. Email, phone number, fax, uh, you know, all different types of ways that they can reach out to the organization and say, hey, look, you know what? I'm having problems with filling out this application. I need help, I need assistance. And then when that happens, Instead of, as Jeff was saying, we're you know looking at them with a deer and uh, like a deer in the headlights, we need to just ask the question: Okay, how can I help? How can I help you? You know, what can I do? Right? Even when you're hiring people on through in the onboarding process, ask the person with a, a developmental disability: What can we do to help you be more productive in this job? They've had disabilities for all of their life. They're very creative and they're good at problem solving. So they've been able to solve these problems for all of their life. They're the best tasks to help you understand what accommodation is gonna be needed that'll help them be, be um, you know, a good and successful employee with the organization. And also, you know, when there's problems with accessibility, they've already had those barriers that they've had to overcome. So engaging them in the conversation is gonna go a long way. Great, well said, well said. Uh, I think we've talked about the service animal uh, side of it. Uh, also, um, just be aware that in some situations, employees actually have their own employee that comes with them as a direct service professional. And so you need to be aware of that as a, a situation you might face and know how you're going to um, accommodate that. Uh, so then recruiting communication channel. So now you've decided, got, I've got the planning in process, the culture is uh, emerging, and now I need to actually reach out and do this. I need to start talking to people with developmental disabilities. This is kind of where the rubber is starting to meet the road. Uh, one, you can contact Louisiana Re Rehabilitation Services. Um, uh, you've got Charlene on the line. She also has on with us, uh, Clement du Duguay. Thank you, sir. Uh, he's the red specialist. And so that's where you would begin. And a lot of times they will tell you, I have 20 or 30 uh, job ready people that we can place. Uh, and here's their resumes or here's the resumes that I think will uh, help um, fill your needs, meet your needs. So you can start there. Uh, ARC of Greater New Orleans, uh, they place eligible employees in employment. Family Helping Families, there's a Jefferson Parish office and uh, Family Helping Families of New Orleans, and they can circulate the fact that your organization is looking to hire uh, and or would welcome applications from people with disabilities. Uh, you might reach out and do the same with Autism Society of uh, Greater New Orleans. Uh, we've talked a little bit about Goodwill Industries, uh, Goodwill of Southeastern Louisiana, and you've got your con contact right there. She does the placement, and so they may have had an employee inside their organization that they've been training and getting job ready, as you would want to call it, and she would be the one you would want to contact. Uh, reach out to your local high schools, their special education programs, and you can match that up with uh, LHS and LRS, Louisiana Rehabilitation Services, um, match that up with them and get a um, 240 hours of their time reimbursed. And so that would work out really well for you. Um, and then you can look at the Louisiana Statewide Independent Living Council as well. Uh, most specifically, so if you're in um, more professional level services, I uh, might be looking for college graduates. Uh, there's the Louisiana Alliance of Post-Secondary Inclusive Education uh, Georgia has something similar. Uh, I know New York, uh, North Carolina does. And so they're in Bossier Parish, um, Nichols University, Southeastern Louisiana. Uh, all of these have programs very, very specifically uh, designed to help people with developmental disabilities prepare for a uh, higher level job uh, um, in the industry. 
I did not go visit this, but I find it interesting that LSU Health Services Center has such a program. You can imagine the uh, needs that the health industry has and how important recruitment is to them. And so they've got their own dedicated uh, program. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, but don't uh, stop there. Uh, seek referrals from your own employees. You know, tell them, okay, we've identified this as a problem. We're interested in hiring people with disabilities. They may have neighbors. They may know people from their church or civic groups or fraternal organizations. Don't hesitate talking to other people about it. Um, it's, you know, at my church, I can tell you that typically on any given day, we have three or four families there that have a child with a disability there. And some of them are in their 30s and 40s and those types of things. So uh, reach out to them and say, we're in looking for this and see if they can help you. Uh, on your signage and uh, make it visible to cu customers that are people with disabilities are encouraged to apply. If you look at uh, Chick-fil-A here in Atlanta and throughout their organization, they have people with disabilities in the front uh, the restaurant area and those types of things all the time and they do a great job for them um disability related job boards um not as much out there as i'd like to have seen the best i saw was uh, i've seen is ability corps which is abilitycorps.org but the job boards many of those really are national in scope and uh this is kind of okay what's happening here in new orleans and unless any of y'all have any ideas beyond that? I just didn't find a whole lot. Uh, private agencies uh, and consultants, Pinnacle Employment is one, Able Network called Jeff. And Jermaine, you're with HR NOLA, right? And so right. all of those agencies uh, would be more than happy to help you with uh, strategies along these lines. Talked a little bit, let's see, we're not a little bit behind, so I'll try and speed up a little. Uh, ensuring receptionists or clerks are always welcoming. Simp and this goes back to what Jermaine would say. Simplify and minimize wording on the job application form. Eliminate the jargon and complicated language. If it looks like a lawyer wrote it, they probably going to have, diff I'm going to have difficulty understanding it. So, uh, you know, let's look at that. And that's going back and saying, is our process open to everyone? Uh, and again, uh, going back to Jermaine's comment, allow a candidate to apply on tape or provide information by phone. You know, will y'all do that? And uh, um, make it clear, is it clear that you would welcome a guardian to help them fill out an online application if you're running a Chick-fil-A or you're doing whatever it is you might do? Um, and you also have to understand limited or spotty employment histories. People with disabilities, employment uh, histories do not look like mine and yours. And so you need to just be aware of that, um, be ready to uh, accept it for what it is. And um, they have difficulties getting jobs. And then they sometimes are the first to leave, just as Again, Jermaine was talking about the impact of COVID on people with disabilities in their job. Um, eliminating questions or requirements that are no longer appropriate or necessary for the new recruiting strategy. Um, if it's creating a barrier for somebody that now all of a sudden becomes a little uncomfortable not knowing how to answer that, uh, what can you do to make sure that you know, one, is the question necessary? And two, to what, what are you really after? What is it you need to know? And can you rewrite it? We talked about making sure the entryways, walkways, sidewalks are accessible. And then in an interview, if somebody's disability manifests itself, uh, Tourette syndrome, um, things like that, autism. Uh, so, they don't have to declare it in the interview, but if it becomes apparent to you and then they, they bring it up, then you can go ahead and pursue some questioning related to job function. Oh, I didn't realize you had Tourette syndrome and I've had a Tourette syndrome guy work for me. Um, and so how's that affect your job? 
function or will that impact it in any way? Should it? And then you can address those issues. If a disability is revealed by the applicant, you may ask them and to describe how they will perform the job under those conditions. Pretty simple. Uh, and it'll just allow more time for that interview and ensure applicants are free to ask questions and seek clarification. Talked a little bit about accommodations. Um, Jeff, if you would just tell your story about the simplicity of accommodations sometimes. Uh, I I was at work a few years ago, it was an office job, and I was new on the job. And it was a disability related nonprofit. And I went in, I sat down at my office and started fooling with the computer. Well, I, the computer keyboard kept shaking because there was a light keyboard. And the more stress I get, the worse my dexterity is. But the business chef is thinking, I can't go into my boss's office and say, would you spend a hundred bucks on me? I'm brand new and I got CP. So I made the decision that Say, I went to my boss and said, would you mind coming to watch me work? And she did. She sit there and watch me. Said, I'll be right back. Keep in mind, she's familiar with disabilities. She came back with four pieces of Velcro stuck to the bottom of the keyboard. Problem solved. I've been freaking out for weeks. She solved the problem with 50 cents worth of Velcro. My point is, when we, when we say accommodation, automatically we think dollar signs. We need to transform our brains. When we say the word accommodation, let's just stop and think about living Think about what they're going through and really think about what I can do to help that individual. It might be as easy as a simple piece of Velcro. <laughs> and I think, uh, you know, on average, the uh, any accommodation is generally less than $500. And many of those are reimbursed by uh, one of the state agencies. So, um, you know, just don't be afraid to uh, pursue somebody, uh, pursue an employee because of that. It's just well, not that big of a barrier. But you know, Gordon, it, it doesn't always fall on you. Some of this falls on me. I need to empower myself to go to Gordon and say, Gordon, I need help. Can you, can you, can you give me some? So we need to empower each other to voice up what we need. Well stated. Thanks, sir. Um, and so how do we retain our employees? Um, it's just good HR practices. It's uh, have a well-planned, well-executed interview process. Improve your onboarding process and make sure it's a, a reaching out and understanding there, there are needed accommodations, anything along those lines. Work with a supervisor who is ex easily accessible and supportive. Um, you know, you don't want him reporting to the gruffest guy you got off the bat. So uh, provide consistent feedback, positive reinforcements, and fast intervention as warranted. You know, if we hadn't, you know, plain old told Deontay, hey, you know, that that's not up to our standards, uh, we would have had a lot less uh, positive experience with them. Uh, HR supervisor, uh, HR and supervisor needs to stay attuned to changes in their living arrangements and personal or family relationships. A lot of times people with disabilities, uh, developmental disabilities in particular, are taken advantage of financially. Uh, there's subject to sexual abuse and those types of things. So if all of a sudden something's changing, you need to be just kind of aware there might be uh, other uh, things at play. 
uh, ensure the accommodations remain in place. You know, on Tuesday, I said everything is good with uh, uh, Jeff. And, um, you know, by Thursday, the Velcro and its adhesiveness had worn off and the thing was sliding all up. Is it still in place? Keep them updated. And that's very true on the um, computer side of it. Transportation, that's a, you know, you and I, most, a lot of us will walk outside and get in the car and we'll drive where we need to go. Not everybody with a developmental disability can do that. So be mindful about transportation issues. Do you have reliable transportation? That's an area that you can uh, talk to them about and see if there's any necessary support in that area and how you might accommodate that. Um, and then just rely on the supervisor or third party job coach to build that relationship, maintain it, monitor it, uh, and ensure that they're getting along with their workers, direct line supervisors and those types of things. Safety, it's an issue with everybody, but an everyday issue with somebody with a disability. Um, you know, if you look at today's modern buildings or um, fire um, alarm systems are all set for uh, hearing impairments are set for visual impairment and those types of things and have the uh, proper equipment in place. You need to make sure that remains true. Uh, ensure the plans are in place for the effective evacuation of people with disabilities. Fire, those types of things. And I know we all go through fire drills and we have uh, fire leaders throughout the organization in different sections. How are we going to make sure Jeff with cerebral palsy is get, uh, gets to safety? Um, and then not too long after they're with you, you might go ahead and do a fire drill early in their uh, employment, just to make sure that those safety precautions are going to work the way you envision them. Uh, last thought, uh, as with all new hires, some work out well and some do not. Don't get discouraged. Don't stop recruiting. Uh, I, I've been in business, I don't know, 35 years, and I think I run about 51% on good hires. <laughs> so uh, the same remains true. Uh, but I do think you should uh, find people that are enthusiastic and eager and so um, I would just encourage you, if you have one that doesn't work out as well as you'd like, don't stop. Keep, keep working at it. Be creative. Keep an open mind. Uh, your future hiring decisions can have life-changing impacts on someone's life. People with disabilities often really have a very limited life. They're, they're in small clusters of people with disabilities. They don't have friends outside of that group, very um, restrictive. And so when they get out into a workforce, they start making friends uh, in the community. And all of a sudden people say, well, why don't we do this Friday night? And all of a sudden they're actually doing something socially. These are the, and they just blossom. They just absolutely blossom. So um, your decisions can really truly impact uh, their lives. Just quickly, uh, key resources and aids. If you look on page 25 of your uh, curriculum, all the various documents that I've looked at, consulted, used in uh, developing the curriculum are identified there. You, you can see ODEP is very active in it, askearn.org, uh, workforce recruitment, just about any issue you'd like to further investigate you can do through these resources. So please feel free to take a look at them. Uh, in conclusion, we hope we brought you step-by-step -step, uh, strategies to successfully recruit, hire, and retain people with disabilities. And that's key element, those organizations that you reach out to to help you find the people and those strategies, very important to that. Uh, I think once you go down this path, you'll begin enjoying employees who truly love their jobs, are reliable and productive and dedicated to continuous improvement. Uh, and they'll inspire other employees to uh, act 
accordingly. Um, it's just a great opportunity to access new pool of talent. I think um, I think I think that was Jermaine that said that so succinctly. Um, and so embrace your creativity, become a leader. It takes leadership to make this work. Uh, leadership in your organization, in your industry, and in your community. And uh, you know, if you if you are successful here, it will pay dividends well beyond. Um, so panelists, um, we'll check on questions and answers for a second. Any final comments from our panelists? I have one, uh, uh, Gordon. Um, yeah, I think uh, Jeff said it very clearly, you know, about sensitivity. And I think as a, um, a rehab services specialist, you know, I try to bring that to uh, employers. I know it, it, it's something that's known by many of our employers in our area and throughout the country. However, um, it's, it's not actually uh, worked on or actualized by the, uh, by the employer throughout the line. So uh, I think that's something we should key on as far as bringing that to the table when we deal with employers. Very good. Other panelists. I'd like to add something. I think uh, Clement is on point. You know, a lot of the steps that you talked about from an HR standpoint, it's like, oh my God, I've got enough work to do. There's just all this other stuff you want me to do now. But that's why having those partnerships with people like the LRS and Goodwill Industries, these people, they know disabilities, right? So it's about partnering with those who know disabilities, you know your business, having the conversations with them about, okay, this is what we need. This is a job. Let's talk about you know, do you have a client that would fit that? Uh, if you're a library, you don't want somebody who's loud and boisterous to work at the library. So you want to make sure that this person with a developmental disability, uh, excuse me, with yeah. a disability is a good fit for your environment. And so that requires a conversation with your partner. And so it's all about building the right relationships with people like the LRS, um, Goodwill Industries, and the other list of uh, agencies that uh, Gordon spoke about earlier, and then having conversations about what you need and how they can help best fit those needs. Great, thank you. Great. Yes, all great information. Yeah. Thank you. I got a few, Gordon. I knew you would. <laughs> uh, you know, I got two critical stories that hold a lot of weight. I I got my first job a year into being here. Two years into that job, uh, I had a store manager of another store come see us for something. And he walked up to me and said, I'd like to hire more people with disabilities because you work your tail off. I said, that's true. And he looked at me dead in the eye and said, where are they? Now, I say this to say this. The outreach on all parts, and I'm including people with disabilities. We need to empower people with disabilities to get out there, say, hey, I need a job. Hey, I'm struggling. That's where we need to own it. And people in nonprofits, we need to talk more about people with disabilities. We've got to put ourselves on the map. And that's why I do what I do. Another story. I'm at work three years ago. I get, I'm involved with all kinds of nonprofits out there. I get a phone call from a 30 year old girl with autism. She said, hey, Jeff. I said, hey, what's up? And she said, I, I want to do what you do. I want to go to work every day. And I can be a little, I cut to the chase. And I said, well, let's have a conversation. 
What have you done to get a job? That's where we need to start. And I didn't say that to make them feel bad. I said that to let her know that this just does not happen. Job just don't come knocking at my door. I've got to boom, 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 boom. Then I got to go to Jermaine and say, Jermaine, here's what I've done. How can you help me? Because I think we need to see, we all need to work together. And we all need to understand that we all have a role to play. So, uh, and I wanted to say this, I have spoken to Sherm on the North Shore. If you're interested in furthering conversations with me, visit my website, callonjeff.com. I really enjoyed the webinar today, thanks. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Devika, I'm, did I interrupt someone? Devika, uh, any uh, unanswered questions we need to address? Uh, no, I just wanted to make sure that uh, there was a question in the chat, and I think Ms. Bonk had responded to them, but I want to make sure they heard the answer. Um, so the question was, how do you find out about recruiting people with disabilities for my local state? Um, this is from, I'm sorry, my chat is not scrolling, Ontara Jenkins. And um, if that has, if there's any insight to add there, that would be great, but I feel like you all were answering those questions kind of in your conversation. And if Ms. Jenkins or Mr. Jenkins, could you tell us what state you're from? You can type it in chat. You're still online. Maybe. Um, but yeah, so that was one of our questions that we had. Um, they're from Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama. So I know each state is different. So there being insight there. Okay, well, that's interesting. Um, so of course, every state has some form of uh, rehabilitation services uh, and I'm sure Alabama does as well. Uh, Todd, special thanks to you for hosting us. I really appreciate sure. that. Jermaine, it was a pleasure getting to know you. This has been great. Charlene, I hope Clement does well for you and he seems like a great guy, very knowledgeable, very well versed, so that's great. Uh, so on behalf of the Working Together Campaign and Louisiana Council, Developmental Disabilities Council, I'd like to thank everybody and wish you well the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all have a good day. Thank you, sir. You do the same, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tristan. <laughs> I now know what uh, trickle down means and uh, I can say trickle down. down. It worked in that sense, it worked. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Um, Todd, much. there is a question for you um, to the panelists. It is to the panelists only. So, uh, but it may, what is there a schedule for the chamber meetings? I think Todd already hopped off. Okay. Yep. Looks okay. like. Well, um, that was from Ms. Charlene Bonk. So hopefully we can um, send that to her. Oh, <laughs> I know who she is. Yeah. That was from Clement. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's hard because he is also on your name. So yeah. I don't know who is. Who. Know. <laughs> but we can find out um, what the schedule is. That's no problem. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, Jermaine, I, I would sure like to talk to you again if you would give me your email. Oh, sure. Not a problem. I will um, definitely put that. Let's see. Can I send you something directly in chat? Oh, you can just send me an email. Yeah, whatever you'd like. Awesome. And you've got her emails on those emails I send you, Jeff. She's copied on it. So you got her email there. All right. That works too. Thanks. Perfect. All thank right. you. Right. Well, man, thank you for joining us, man. Oh, thank you. Really enjoyed it. Good. And good luck with your new position. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And Jermaine, I really enjoyed talking with you yesterday and getting to know you over the last couple of weeks. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, you guys are doing some good work. I'm hoping that uh, some people are put back to work soon. Well, I appreciate that. Great. 
Hey, Gordon, this is it. You can put on your resume. You finally got an opportunity to work with me. There you go. <laughs> and you I'm can sorry. retire. <laughs> <laughs> and Jermaine, if you could send me your email also. Yes, we'll do. But I don't have your contact information. Yeah, we do, and I don't either. So <laughs> you're you're gonna have to get Charlene to send yours to us. Okay, yeah. we'll do I'm included that. on the uh the emails from Gordon. Um, so if okay. if if you can tag on that, that'd be great. Okay, yeah, but he, we'll, he we'll hasn't do. been. So he I didn't know he was coming in until this morning. So okay. he hasn't <laughs> been on those emails. So just make sure you let us know how to reach out to you. All right. Is it we'll possible, do. Gordon, that you could have uh, maybe uh, someone within your office just create a um, contact list for all of the panelists that could be sent out to each one of us? Sure, sure. Be happy to. It'll go out uh, tomorrow morning. Won't be today, but it will go. Perfect. Out Sounds like a plan. And so, Clement, in the meantime, would you, uh, I'm Gordon at O'NeillCommunications.com. Yeah. And uh, uh, Charlene has that if you can doesn't go well for you and uh, just send it to me and I'll add you to it as well. Will do. All right. Good deal. All right. Thank you. Have a great rest of the day. Okay. Bye-bye.